This chapter is about inventing in a huge time range, about predicting. The difference between uh, inventing and predicting is just a time range. When we invent, we predict the future that is going to happen in the coming months or years. When we predict, we invent, we make a kind of brave prediction, brave invention. What is going to happen to a smartphone? What is going to happen to a chair? What is going to happen to a lecture in, a, let's say, in 10 years, in 20 years, or in 50 years? So instruments that could help you to predict are really in high demand. First of all, because of our natural curiosity. We are curious what is going to happen to us in 10 years, in 20 years, in 50 years. And the second reason is simply a kind of business reason. Because when a company wants to, to know whether it is time or whether it's a good moment to invest in certain concepts that hasn't been developed so far but promises, uh, but promising, uh, that is really necessary to have a kind of support for your, let's say, informative decision. Whether it is time to open this new secret lab that will work on, uh, let's say, flying smartphone or, uh, or um, um, internet lecturing and so on and so on. Here is uh, the part of the classical trees that was introduced by uh, Henry Halschuler more than 70 years ago. And uh, this part is called Trends of Evolution of Engineering System. Halschuler studied, as he reported, 40,000 patterns. And out of these 40,000 uh, patterns, he somehow distilled certain trends which any technical system is going to evolve. Uh, no matter what kind of system it is, it will follow certain trend of evolution. Alshuler figured out, uh, supported, supported by his uh, followers, about 10 trends of technical system evolution. There are other sub-trends of those trends. For the sake of time, I don't want this course to disturb you too long time. I would like to focus only on four of them. Uh, why the choice is just four out of 10? I would say these are, uh, as far as I'm considered, the most interesting uh, evolution trends and the most constructive. So I use them in my personal in my not my professional life, and hopefully you will use it too. So out of those 10 trends of technical system evolution, I would like to focus, I would like to discuss with you the S-curve uh, S, S trend, the evolution of S pattern of evolution of technical system. The second would be uh, the trend of ideality increase. The third would be the trend of functionality increase. And the fourth would be the, the trend of dynamization, the trend of dy dynamicity increase. So these are four trends we are going to go through. A few speculations about the history of this concept, the concept of uh, trend of technical system evolution. Um, we could go as deep as magic crystal and other fortune-telling methods, but I would like to, let's say, to start from those methods that were supported somehow by logic, by philosophy, or by, by uh, science, in a way. And here, I think dialectic rules and the Hegel laws of evolution, he uh, recommended to consider anything, any product or any phenomenon in its development, to study the history and to try to predict the future. Uh, this work, for example, was somehow realized by the study of evolution of the rifle made by uh, Friedrich Engels a bit later. So any study that considers a phenomenon or a product in its evolution, it's in, like to, to, in its like in influence uh, that it has on uh, super system and subsystems, and being influenced by different dri driving forces of this uh, of the whole environment, should be considered as evolution theory. For example, we can consider evolution cycles of uh, uh, Nikolai Kondratiev that could be also observed as a kind of interpolation technique. We could consider the, the history, uh, sorry, the approach to, to innovation cycles made by the father of, of innovation theory, uh, Joseph uh, Schumpeter and Austrian School of Economics. So all this, let's say, logic, dialectics of, of studying a product in its evolution, studying a phenomena in its evolution, learning the history, and uh, to study the existing product as a, as a result of, of certain, certain paths. It is a spiritual background of trends of uh, engineering system evolution formulated by Henry Halschuler.
what are the bridges we have to build between this concept, uh, trends of engineering system evolution and other parts of trees and some tools of predicting the future outside of trees. Ideal final result. Of course, as system evolves, it becomes more and more ideal. So the link to the concept of ideal final result is direct and really strong. Contradiction analysis. As system evolves, it becomes more dynamic and the dynamicity increase makes flexibility increase and typically flexibility is a, one of the principles to be applied in order to get rid of some contradictions. So when you want from system to be small and big, short and long, uh, you can apply contradiction, make system better. At the same time, you will go forward certain trend of dynamicity increase. So it is believed that eliminating contradictions one by one, we improve the system and the system follows certain pattern in order to better dynamicity, better ide idealization, better idealization or more functionality. And maybe function modeling. In function model, first of all, it forces us to think about the function. So we have to consider evolution, not a system, but evolution as sort of function. And second, when we do having done function modeling, when we do trimming in order to make system better, simpler, cheaper, when also we also go step by step toward ideality increase and we also get rid of contradictions. So definitely there are some strong links of trends of technical system evolution and other chapters of trees. Some links to methods outside of trees and here definitely we, we should mention some methods of interpolation. There are basically two methods. One method is based on on uh, and say interpolating and uh, interpreting certain trends and economical indexes like uh, consumption of oil per capita or consumption of electricity per capita. So there are a couple of books, for example, of Theodore Modis who predicted the future of certain industries based on the statistics, economical statistics and some a bit brave, but uh, interpolation of this uh, interpreting of these statistics. Uh, there were two books and what is really interesting in kind of uh, uh, very nice comparing to trees uh, that in his second book uh, Theodore Moody's tried to evaluate his predictions that he made uh, 10 years ago. Another method is based of analysis uh, of uh, let's say uh, patent statistics in a way patent counts for example or paper counts or Facebook like counts uh, likes whatever. Uh, the point is uh, we can try to interpret the future of certain technology from the amount of patents that appear in this technology. So it is reasonable to assume that there is some growth of patents in certain in certain technology uh, we expect the growth of this technology in future. So this study is uh, based on, could be based on big, uh, big data analysis, statistic analysis, and the result of this, is a, uh, of this study would be also a prediction, uh, uh, let's say, of evolution of certain, a certain technology or certain product or certain service, whatever it is. Uh, so these are links of the concept of trends of engineering system evolution to other parts of trees and to some methods, some alternatives to be used in order to predict the future. Trends of evolution of technical system. Conclusions. What I would recommend you to remember about this chapter. There are certain trends in evolution of any system, including engineering system, product, service or technology. There are many, distilled by Henry Halschuler from 40,000 patents he studied. We focused on four of them. S curve of technical system evolution, S-curve pattern of technical system evolution would help you to define a proper strategy in product improvement, whether to, to make it more manufacturable or to think about change of paradigm and a conceptual new, a breakthrough uh, about, again, start a kind of uh, secret laboratory to, to uh, introduce uh, a breakthrough product. The trend of ideality incre increase would possibly push you to think about ideality in terms of ideal final result. So with the evolution of product, it disappears. There is no such a thing like a watch in my hand, but it is somehow I know the time because there is a smartphone. So it evoluted, it, it evolved in a, in a smartphone, but it disappeared. So ideal system is no system, but its function is ensured that that is the place where all technical system go if we believe in trees. 
The next trend was uh, the trend of dynamization. That is one I really like because it's very constructive. So it's, it helps not, not only to predict, but also to, let's say, to, to uh, invent. So we believe that as system evolves, it becomes more dynamic, it becomes more flexible. Uh, it evolves uh, toward uh, adapting, uh, adaptation and self-adapting. Uh, functionality increase trends, the fourth tra trend we started. Uh, it is uh, a trend that tells you um, in which way this new system will integrate new functions. What would be the pattern of adapting new functions for this uh, or that technical system? These were the trends. They are used in, in prediction. They are used for making strategic decision to which, which, which technology or which product you are going to invest. And it helps you to, uh, to also to invent, to invent in a, in, a, in, a, in a horizon of 10, 20 years or to predict. And if you happen to be a science fiction writer, it's a very good tool to write a very good book about some exciting and predicted and uh, therefore very interesting concept.